Number 8. Cat Worship Across the World Spoiling your adorable pet cat isn't just a modern practice. If you've ever had a cat, you already know how regal they can act, and why wouldn't they? The kitties we know and love were way more than just pets back in the day. But we're talking thousands of years ago, a time when human beings once worshipped cats like gods. Cat worship in ancient Egypt is one of the most popular instances we know of today. In the old city of Heliopolis, cat goddesses like Bastet, Sekhmet, and Madfet were highly revered. Each goddess helped the natives with a different need. For example, goddess Tefnut was worshipped for providing moisture to the land. It helped people with drinking water and growing their crops. Some deities were also portrayed as warriors that protected the people of ancient Egypt. The Greeks also worshipped cats and believed that the goddess Hecate had mutated into a cat while attempting to escape from Typhon's murderous rage. Hecate was the goddess of witchcraft as well as the goddess of the hunt, so while escaping, she kept a special favor for cats. As you can see, when it comes to cats, the Egyptians and Greeks had quite a bit in common. Similar to those from the West, the Chinese were also cat worshippers. In the ancient Book of Rites, a cat god named Li Xiao is mentioned. He was the guardian of families and protected the food crops that sustained life. Li Xiao kept pests and mice away from the crops and was especially worshipped by the farmers for his service. You can still find depictions of Li Xiao throughout China through thousands of guardian lion statues that represent the ancient cultural belief people had in Li Xiao's power as the protector of all. While the cat god did his thing in China, there was Ovinik in the Polish land. Ovinik was seen as the guardian of barns and domesticated animals. Ovinik was offered several gifts and offerings to keep him from burning down crops he was asked to protect. If you're picturing Ovinik to be a beautiful golden furball, then we're sorry to disappoint you. He was given the form of a fat black cat with piercing yellow eyes, which explains why Russians feared and despised him, even thinking he was the devil's aid. It's amazing how a cat was regarded with such a high-ranking position. Are they really that powerful? Did the rose bush in the backyard wilt away because my cat was upset with me? It makes you think. Number 7. Distance Between Sun and Earth The distance between the Sun and Earth is a complex calculation that only brilliant mathematicians can calculate. After all, you can't just pull out a measuring tape and mark the distance, right? So how was it possible for ancient civilizations to do it? Not just one, but communities across the globe made several claims and calculations with regards to celestial bodies and their positions. Some of these also coincide with real figures. They may not have been completely accurate, but without any technical help, computers, or even calculators that we have today, the feat they achieved was pretty impressive. If it wasn't for the internet, we'd have to heavily depend on our school texts for this kind of info. So let's get into the who's and what's of ancient astrophysics. People in ancient Greece were among the first to try and build a model of the cosmos. Their tool of choice? The naked eye. They thought the moon could be larger since it appeared so much closer. The sun looked to be of the same size, but was brighter. So smart as they were, they were quick to conclude that maybe the sun was larger, but much farther away. With the invention of geometry, what were once vague descriptions started turning into precise measurements. In the 2nd century BCE, astronomer Hipparchus established the use of a method known as parallax. He observed the moon from two different cities and used geometry and parallax to compute the distance to the moon. With that out of the way, another astronomer named Aristarchus tried his luck at determining the Earth's distance from the Sun. His answer was off by a few thousand increments. Much later in the 15th century, the accurate distance was found written in a Hindu text called Hanuman Chalisa. Authored by Goswami Tulsidas, the text mentions the exact value of the distance, but it was mentioned two centuries before modern scientists calculated it. 
Also, Rig Veda, which is one of the most revered texts dating back to 1500 to 1000 BCE, not only gives details of the distance between the Sun and the Earth, but also the diameter of the Sun and the Moon, and several details of the planets and the solar system as a whole. Most calculations coincide with the accurate figures that we know today. Considering we are talking about quantifiable measures, it's simply unbelievable how some of the calculations made thousands of years ago line up with modern knowledge. Number 6. Early Flying Machines We all know the Wright brothers flew the first plane, but were they the first to design one? Apparently not. Flying machines, airplanes, aircraft, whatever you call it, have been mentioned in ancient relics and on cave inscriptions time and again. They might not be the same as the ones we use today, but according to this evidence, those machines could fly. One of the earliest mythological mentions is the infamous wings of Daedalus. He used tied bird feathers and sealed them together with wax to fly like a bird. Indian legends mention a flying chariot called Vimana. Known as the Chariot of Gods, there is an ancient text that solely focuses on aeronautics. The Sanskrit scripture had eight chapters talking about different theories of aeronautics, including strategies to engage in if airborne or ground attacks were to happen. Eric von Däniken was one of the critical writers who could not emphasize enough the various depictions of spacecrafts and planes from several ancient civilizations. Whether it's the pyramids of Egypt or the Moai on Eastern Island or Stonehenge, Though living miles away, with possibly no means of contact, all these ancient sites bear some references to flying machines. Now whether these aircraft belong to the human race or from outer space, that's a story for a show like Ancient Aliens. Number 5. Curse of Hope Diamond When you think of cursed objects, a blue diamond doesn't really come to mind, does it? However, the Hope Diamond has time after time brought strange occurrences and events to those who own it. Curse or coincidence? You decide. Worth over $250 million, this blue-hued diamond allegedly holds a sinister curse. According to legend, it was stolen from a Hindu temple in India by a priest. He was later caught and subjected to a slow and painful death. After his death, the diamond found a new owner and was handed to a French merchant. The merchant's fate wasn't very lucky either. Soon after getting the diamond, he was mauled to death by a pack of ferocious dogs. Before his death, he sold the jewel to King Louis XIV. The diamond stayed in the king's family right until the French Revolution. If you remember your history lessons from school, you'll know that during the revolution, King Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette were publicly beheaded. The diamond then trickled down many generations and misfortunes before Evelyn McLean bought it for $180,000. McLean heard of the alleged curse the stone carried, but she wasn't bothered by it at all. She would soon change her mind as her children and husband died one after the other. After the series of misfortunes and her own demise, the stone was sold to pay off her debts. In 1958, the diamond landed in the Smithsonian Institution. So maybe the curse came to an end, right? Believers of the curse don't feel so. The Smithsonian Institution is under the government of the United States. Since it was put on display there, the USA has been through a number of turmoils, from wars, race riots, to assassinations of presidents. Could it possibly all be traced back to the diamond? We may never know. What do you think? If you're enjoying our video, don't forget to give us a like, share, and also, please do subscribe to our channel for more incredible historical discoveries. Now, back to the action. Number 4. Sundials In our modern world, we're blessed with the convenience of watches, clocks, and phones to tell time. But how did people in the past figure it out? The ancient world looked at their shadows or at the position of the sun to determine what time of day it was. Though it worked pretty well, there was still a need for something better and something more accurate. It led to the invention of the sundial, the closest ancient timekeeping device we have to the modern watch. But the remarkable part about the sundial is that it wasn't restricted to a certain community or geographical boundaries. The device was invented around the world in several cultures in a similar time frame. 
The earliest ones date back to ancient Egypt, around 1500 BC. Around the same time, many sundials were discovered in the territory of modern Russia. The device has also been mentioned in the Old Testament as the Dial of Ahaz. In Isaiah chapter 38, verse 8, it was likely of Babylonian or Egyptian design. In the East, the story isn't any different. Sundials also existed in China, but there aren't many historical records to describe how it came into existence. They were invented in ancient China in 800 BCE and eventually transformed into water clocks by 100 AD. The Greeks also developed many forms of the sundial. They had initially derived it from the Babylonian style, but thanks to their geometrical advancements, they were able to make it even better. Astronomer Theodosius of Bithynia had allegedly invented a sundial that could be used anywhere in the world. Considering all these ancient civilizations came up with the idea around the same time, that is one big coincidence. Number 3. Winged Sun Disk Ancient symbols weren't just sketches or drawings, they held deep meaning and religious significance. Each culture and community had its own style of making those symbols, so it's truly surprising to see the same objects popping up in different centuries and geographical locations. The winged sun disk has been a common symbol in many cultures from the ancient world. It is one of the oldest symbols related to the sun and religion. You can find different variations of the sun disk across many communities, like the Sumerians, the Hittites, and the Assyrians. It is said to have signified omnipresence and was largely associated with the divine. The disk was also used to symbolize royalty and power in Egypt, Persia, Anatolia, and Mesopotamia. In the most common renditions in Egypt, it was depicted as a solar globe being carried on the wings of a hawk, the god Horus, along with the horns of god Amun. The winged sun disk was one of the main symbols for the main god of heaven, who was worshipped under many names in ancient Egypt. The symbol can be found carved over doorways on many temples and also Egyptian tombs. In Asia, Mesopotamia, and the Levant, the symbol appeared around the time of 2000 BC. It was considered a symbol of royalty by Assyrian rulers. The same symbol can be seen on Hebrew seals from the reign of Judah. During the times of Zoroastrian Persia, the winged sun disk was called the Farahar, which meant visual aspect of Ahura Mazda. Ahura Mazda was the supreme god in the Zoroastrianism faith. In some versions, the symbol was found to have the Egyptian symbol for the key of life on either side. Number 2. The Curse of Tutankhamun In 1992, Howard Carter, a British archaeologist, discovered the final resting place of Pharaoh Tutankhamun, or better known as King Tut. The 18-year-old pharaoh took his last breath around 1323 BC and was buried in the Valley of the Kings. Most tombs at the site had been looted and plundered, but this one was different. The tomb that Carter found was completely untouched. Carter's project was financed by the 5th Earl of Carnarvon. What lay in the tomb changed his life forever. The team found the pharaoh's mummified body, along with paintings and religious objects. This huge discovery sent the entire world into a state of frenzy, and soon stories of curses started trickling in. There was no actual curse inscribed on the tomb, but the rumors were enough to send shockwaves. Things took an unfortunate turn when the Earl of Carnarvon died a few years after the discovery was made. Was it the curse or just a coincidence? But this was not the only consequence of opening the tomb. It was only the beginning. A series of misfortunes began soon after. The alleged curse victimized the Prince of Egypt, Ali Kamel Fami Bey, who was shot in 1923 by his wife. Next, it was game over for Sir Archibald Douglas Reed, whose death in 1924 was also shrouded in mystery. He had apparently taken the X-ray of the mummy. This was soon followed by the assassination of the Governor General of Sudan, Sir Lee Stack in 1924 in Cairo. If you thought this was the end of it, you're wrong. Another member of Carter's team, Arthur Mace, died of suspicious arsenic poisoning in 1928. Carter's secretary also fell victim to the alleged curse. He was strangled in his bed in 1929. Carter's father, the very next year, committed suicide. 
Carter, however, dismissed the idea of the curse till his last breath. He died in 1939 of Hodgkin's disease. So what do you think? Was Carter oblivious to the fact that he and the people around him might have been cursed to death? Do you believe in the mystery surrounding the curse and the mummy? Let us know in the comments below. Number 1. Sphinx the Great Sphinx of Giza is one of the most marvelous and recognizable wonders of the world. The 4,500-year-old giant statue draws in thousands of tourists each year. Located near the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt, this 240 feet long and 66 feet tall sphinx is touted as one of the largest monuments in the world. The image of a sphinx is instantly associated with ancient Egyptian culture, but its origins might not be so simple. The ginormous monument might be the greatest example the world has seen of a sphinx, but is it the only one of its kind? Apparently not. But what exactly is a sphinx? It is a creature that has the body of a lion and the head of a human. Though depictions of sphinxes may vary from time to time, it has been deemed as an important mythological figure in Egyptian culture. But it turns out the Asian and Greek mythologies also mention the creature. In ancient Egyptian culture, the Sphinx was portrayed as a male, with the headdress of a pharaoh. It was considered a spiritual guardian, and statues of Sphinxes were found in tombs and temples. The Sphinx Alley in Luxor, for example, is a large avenue that connects the temples of Kamak and Luxor. The alley is lined with Sphinx statues. References of the Sphinx in Asia and Greece have been found dating back to the 15th and 16th centuries. In comparison to the Egyptian structures, the Asian Sphinx was usually depicted as a female and had eagle wings. The creature sat on its hunches with a paw raised in the air. Similar to Asian lore, in ancient Greek traditions, the Sphinx is said to have wings. It also had the tail of a serpent. According to legends, the creature would swallow all the travelers who were not able to answer a riddle. That's it for today, guys. Which of these coincidences took you by surprise? Did you know about any of them already? Have you heard of any others? Let us know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon so you're notified of our next video. Till then, bye. See you next time.